Hi, my name is Toye Princeville. Um, some people are kind enough to call me Prince Toye Princeville. But uh, for sake of, uh, let us call it reality, my name is Toye. Um, people call me TP, depends on how close they are. As long as they don't call me idiot, it's fine. Um, what's my background? Um, very interesting. I'm a producer. Um, I'm a petroleum engineer. Um, I'm a philanthropist. Uh, but more recently, people know me as a politician. Um, I'll forgive them for that. I'm also a project manager. Um, I'm one of those people who you might call a diaspora, uh, who's returned to Nigeria to make something out of himself. Um, how am I a petroleum engineer? I trained here in the UK, Imperial College. I did my master's in mineral resources engineering. Uh, moved from that into project management and information technology. Uh, whew, what are my, my, my hobbies? I love movies. Uh, one of the reasons I'm here today is that I don't joke with movies. Um, I've produced four films so far, um, Nenda being my first, uh, Kajola being my second, 76, which I'm very proud of, uh, was my third. And in my, let me call it, uh, uh, recent times, I've managed to do something in, um, um, in Hollywood, but it's a little more low budget than 76. 76 is the big one. And once we get uh, some of this uh, politics out of the way, we'll be coming out with that anytime soon. Um, yeah, Prince comes from me being the son of a king, um, but um, I, don't, I don't think that uh, it makes me anything special. Instead, it gives me more responsibility, so I'm a man who has a lot of responsibilities on my shoulders, which you can see from the bags in my eyes, but there you go. So um, that's me, and um, I'm sure um, anything uh, that I haven't said you can find on Google. Some of those things you see read on Google are not true. But generally, most of it is. So thank you, and uh, it's good to be here. No, it's, it's, uh, it's funny enough, you know, people see these things and they probably think it's diverse, but it's actually the same thing. Um, petroleum engineering, because I'm from a community where oil is literally just underneath our feet. So I'm interested in my community, I'm interested in my people. And I want a situation where, um, you know, I can argue a case for them. So petroleum engineering is a, I guess, a natural progression. Um, if you're genuinely concerned about your people, then you must be genuinely concerned about things that affect them. So petroleum engineering is from that context. Um, Nollywood movies, well, hey, um, I like the image of Nigeria to be projected and projected well. And I felt that getting involved in Nollywood would be an opportunity for me to project the image of Nigeria. If you look at the movies I've produced, whether it be Nenda, whether it be Kajola, whether it be 76, they all have a message, an underlying theme, which are designed to promote Nigeria. So that's why I've been involved in, in movies. And for me, um, my role in Nollywood is not to reinvent the wheel. I'm not interested in trying to make, um, you know, uh, um, Nollywood from scratch. I mean, Nollywood has succeeded, Nollywood is successful. I'm just trying to tweak it a bit. Um, one of the things you learn from project management is how to start and how to finish. And so for me, um, I was looking more at Nollywood as an opportunity for me to just lift up the bar. Now with uh, Kajola, Kajola in my opinion is, uh, is a fantastic movie. Um, I would say that, obviously, because I'm involved, mm. but it's the first science fiction movie that I have seen from Nigeria. And um, what we tried to do was use science fiction to demonstrate the role of technology in film. But also, if you look at the core message, Kajula is a tale of two cities. So we're talking about a rich island and poor mainland. And the whole story is about the theme of you can't succeed or progress at the expense of others. We need to grow together. So if you look at my politics, it's the same message. Um, so Kajola, I think, is um, probably um, um, the first opportunity we've had to sit back and just use green screen to make things happen. So I was excited about it. Um, of course, we, we, we thought it was going to be impossible to do. Um, when the project first came to my doorstep, I was thinking to myself, uh, possible, maybe not. Um, but it happened. And um, yeah, so Kajola is a project I'm very proud of. Thank you.
die. All these innocent people here have to die. It wasn't um, as well as good as I would have liked, um, but I, you know, people don't like me when don't like to hear this when I say it. But it's true. It wasn't really made for profit. Mm. Um, we were knocking the door on a new uh, um, development. We felt that yes, we would be bleeding edge, and of course, as bleeding edge, there's no doubt that you find yourself in a position where, you know, you would have to, you know, you have to break some eggs. So we didn't do it for profit, but I take on board that there's no way that the Nigerian public will look at science fiction the same way as the UK public or the, the US public would do. Uh, it's new, it's new for them. But um, we have it on record that we're the first, and I have no doubt that over time it will be absorbed, especially when we bring it to Nollywood movies and start showing it to the audience that I think would probably appreciate it a lot more. Um, running generators, um, I mean, to be fair, most of the crew were from Lagos. Um, we're talking about now, no longer frontline crew now, but back, I mean, we had fantastic actors in Desmond Elliott and others, but most of the core technical crew were from Lagos. So we had to house them and we had to put generators up and we basically, people shut down, just like with other movies, we shut our people down for a long period, extended periods of time just to make sure they got the job done. But I have to be honest with you, the commitment and the dedication of the team is unbelievable. You know, sometimes conditions which other people would consider unbearable, they, they stayed through it. But the real issue with um, power had to be resolved strictly by use of generators, which of course cost a lot of money, yeah. which is part of the problem that the industry is facing. So we well, um, I wouldn't say no, of course I would. Um, how soon? Uh, maybe it's not going to be so so easy to say. Um, you know, there are two areas in which I want to get involved. One is obviously producing my own movies, but the other area is getting other people who are involved in industry, giving them the kind of environment for them for which they can also thrive. From scriptwriters, you know, to camera crew, to DOPs, giving them the opportunity to train, you know, um, alongside the best, giving them the opportunity to expand their own skill sets. That's another area I want to be involved. I don't have to do everything. I mean, the idea is I can be at a distance helping. Um, I think I'm at a distance already helping, but I can increase that distance and help even more people. That's my, my overall dream in the industry. Well, um, you know, there's the, the work we've already done. Because what I try to do is I try to, at each stage, do the little that you can. I'm not going to wait for tomorrow to start. We've started already, and I've done partnerships with the New York Film Academy. Um, so we've trained lots of people, um, and um, in the partnerships we've done, sometimes as much as five thousand dollars an individual, and people you don't know, but you just think that this is somebody who has the beginnings of a talent. So you now try to encourage them to do more. So we've done lots of sponsorships in that regard. I've also having sponsored people, giving them the opportunity to develop those skills outside of the training itself. So we've set up studios for people, we've given equipment, we've uh, donated um, 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 equipment as well to individuals so that they can go and start off a career of their own. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work, especially on our movie set. We make sure that we take some of these trainees in on those movies as well. Um, we had scriptwriters from Hollywood come to help us with, say, for instance, 76. So we made sure that our own scriptwriters are working alongside them. We had very good DOPs. Um, you know, different kind of skills. Izu Ojuku, one of the best directors Nigeria has. We want to make sure that others are learning from him as well. So it's been not just talk, 
but also you know action and um, with the work we've done with the New York Film Academy we also would like to start to send people out of the country as well but you know they are kind enough to come to Nigeria and work and uh, we've been able to partner with them to train quite a lot of people. Nenda is, um, Nenda, I mean, the headline is orphanages and, you know, the role of orphans in society, the way we view them and, and so on. So that was the headline, but the undertone beneath that was basically not just that, but just the general social challenges we face. So the medical profession, you have premature children, premature babies, and the hospital is asking itself, should I keep these babies alive? What's the cost of keeping them alive versus the revenue? So the commercial side of you know our health infrastructure uh, it addressed issues like smoking, um, cost benefits there, and so on and so forth. Um, marriage, the home. So it was really just looking at X-raying you know society and asking ourselves some very key fundamental questions: What is more important, life or death? Money. Or Naira or Kobo. So those are the kind of things that um, Nenda did. It was, um, I think, a very powerful movie. Um, but, um, you know, um, the main, main headline was the, the issue of orphanages. And, you know, Stephanie put in a very powerful performance. I still remember one of the scenes where she was holding up the uh, demolition quit uh, notice we had given to them to say that they were going to demolish the orphanage and she was holding it up. And, trying to prevent the bulldozers from leveling the orphanage. Powerful acting, um, but really the whole purpose of it was to bring the acting, to take the message, to convey the message. That's why no matter what I do, whether it's a small budget movie or whether it's the big budget movies like 76, we always, always, always want to work with the best. Uh, it's a powerful movie. Um, I mean, looking at the trailer, you know that work went into it, but I can assure you the trailer doesn't really tell half the story. I mean, I watched the movie and I cried. It used real life footage of the 1976 coup. So we had to come here from BBC archives, actually get real life footage of the 1976 coup. So you're watching a movie. As you're watching the movie, you're seeing real life events. So it makes the movie so realistic that you think to yourself, hang on, what am I watching? Am I watching the movie or am I watching real life events? Of course you're watching real life events but it's so intelligently interwoven within the fabric of the movie. It's fantastic. And of course, the acting. I mean, Rita Dominic basically blew her socks off with her acting. Fantastic, dedicated. We're talking about A-list actors being camped in Ibadan for six months. I mean, Ibadan is here, see Lagos just down the road. They were not leaving Ibadan to go to Lagos. They were in character. And because it was shot in 1976, everything around had to be 1976. From the cars that were being driven, to the music playing in the background, to the hairstyles, everything was 1976. It's a, it's a, classic, it's a classic movie. I think it will be a movie that people will watch uh, over and over again. Um, the, the army had to be involved. We shot on the barracks in the same place where m many of these events were really happening. Um, so the movie, the army had to sort of uh, oversee the movie, make sure they had somebody who was resident watching what we were doing to make sure that we kept according to script. And then of course we brought the Hollywood guys in to give us something that we felt would go beyond just the shores of Nigeria. The head of state has just been assassinated. Seal up all the bloody exes. It looks to me like you still don't know why you're here, Captain. 10,000 innocent public officials have been dismissed without benefit. I am a soldier, not a politician. Come on, baby, leave me alone! Susie, I want okay, to okay, see okay. my husband! Okay. I'm a soldier's widow. I know the pain and anguish I went through when my husband died in the battle. Was your, was your husband here that I night? No! I need to know what's going on in my brother's house! They are taking the cool plotters to Lagos. If you do not speak out, my husband will be executed. If I speak out, I could be charged with concealment of treason and that attracts the death penalty. Where is he? 
is your husband? Is my husband missing? <laughs> So it was a nationwide search. I mean, you're looking at Citroëns, you're looking at Land Rovers. Um, many of the cars, well, all of the cars, literally had to go back into the workshop and we had to start fixing them um, from scratch. We don't keep a lot of things, but you, one thing we know about Nigerians is we improvise. So what they would throw away here and say it's unrepairable, we can bring back to life. So we did that. Um, um, yeah, we. We, we cheated a little bit because some of those cars were so old that when they were being driven, there was smoke bellowing out of the back of them. But we had to use uh, camera tactics to get rid of some of that smoke. So yes, we cheated in that regard. But, you know, other than that, uh, it was fantastic. And of course, um, what I think was quite important was that you don't see anything in the movie that suggests to you you're in 2012 or 2011. We had to make sure that you were in 76. Once you're in that movie, watching that movie, you were in the, in the year 1976. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, um, most people may not know this, but uh, I'm a part-time politician and we have a major political battle ahead of us. So what I'm going to do is just get out of that and then focus on, on the release of 76. Um, all I can say is that people should expect something soon. Um, we would love to um, um, make Cannes Film Festival um, because I see that as a major shop window. Don't forget the reason I'm in movies is to promote the image of Nigeria. Um, but you know, I don't want to make any promises. Post-production is currently on. We're doing uh, that in Germany. Um, so once we get past that, uh, past the elections, then we can start to focus on that. So there will be premieres. There is no way we'll be able to do premieres without doing one here in London. So I hope you guys will be kind enough to, to grace us with your presence. We will probably be in New York as well, um, and maybe Paris. Um, but. Um, it's going to be a very packed schedule, so be rest assured that this year you'll be hearing stuff about 76. It's not going to go past this year. Yeah, so, you know, for me, I, I, I want the impact to be something that uh, ultimately um, is positive. Um, that you live there thinking, you know, things can be done slightly differently. I, I just think as a storyteller, which is at the end of the day what I am, I want to be able to tell a good story, a positive story of the country. And if you're impacting the people outside of Nigeria or people who are alien to Nigeria, uh, that's fantastic. But I also want you to impact Nigerians as well so that the Nigerians can, you know, check their ways. Um, I'm starting to build a, a reputation for the kind of movies I'm looking for. So naturally, people will bring things to me. Um, but you know, it's not just so much as what's available to you, but also what mood you're in, what frame of mind I am in as, as an individual as well. So what I've tried to do now is just um, focus on those kind of movies that send a message that tell us that really Nigeria, you need to look at yourself. Um, who knows, tomorrow it may be another set of movies that tell the rest of the world that they need to look at Nigerians. Um, so it's, it's really about the Nigerian message, whether it be internal or external to Nigeria. Um, but people, scriptwriters, directors, you know, other producers know the kind of movies. I'm not interested in a movie where witchcraft is running around the place or a movie where you're talking about love and uh, uh, marriage and divorce and all those kind of things. Uh, yeah, okay. But I really, really, really want a message. And those kind of movies, they have a way of working. And Nigerians are very good storytellers, so these kind of things just keep coming. Um, but it depends on the mood and how recipient I am uh, to those kind of uh, scripts. But I think now that um, politics is beginning to simmer down, we will start to do more and we start to look out for more stuff. Yeah, okay, so I'm running for governor of River State. Um, you know, the idea really is that politics is too important to be left to politicians. And so for me, um, I don't see myself as a politician. But I think that the idea that I don't see myself as a politician is part of the problem. 
And many of us don't see ourselves as politicians. And I'm not comfortable because even if my life is okay or my life is better, many people don't have the chance or the opportunity to say the same. So some of us have to leave our high horses and go down to the grassroots and start to do things that will impact the people's lives. So the people who want to, for instance, go into the movie industry, uh, who is speaking for them? Who is giving them an opportunity? Who uh, is going to give them an opportunity without demanding anything from them? Who is going to say, okay, go and do what you have to do. Go and live your dream, but you don't have to vote for me. It doesn't have to be because you know, you're sleeping with me or you're paying me. I can give you an opportunity simply because you are standing up to be counted and I'm going to allow you to be counted. I'm going to let you be counted. I'm going to give you the opportunity to be counted. So enough of this us versus them. Us on one side and the politicians on the other side. Let's cross over. So that's what I want to do. Um, I believe that it's not just the movie industry, be it sports, be it education. The idea is to go and impact on all those industries. And if you touch 10, 15, 20, 100 lives with what I do now, as a governor in a state, I can do you know, significantly more thousands, if not millions of people will be impacted positively. So that's what I want to do. Um, my hope is that um, not only will I succeed, but I'll also encourage others to also get involved, to worry about their communities, worry about where they're from. Uh, to say that you don't have to be sitting in London and think that I'm too far away from the action. That just like I return to Nigeria, you can also return to Nigeria. And for those people who are in Nigeria, to ask themselves what they can do differently. So that's where politics comes in. But um, other than that, I, I don't like politics. I'm not a fan of politics, but I recognize that politics is uh, the route to a solution for not just me, but for, for others. Not a lot. I mean, um, you know, one of the areas I'm interested in is the youth, developing the youth. That's why I've already said that one out of every three appointments that I would make would be from the younger generation. So that's significant because that's basically saying you're forcing yourself to look towards them, to lift them up. Most politicians will not say that. They, they won't do that. Even if they say they won't do it, I will. Um, also, um, you know, when many people come and say, oh, they're going to do A, B, C, they come up with a long list of things. I've just focused on one, which is job creation, which again is one of the areas that impacts the youth the most. Um, so I, I believe that um, the difference between me and them is that I am not talking about something purely from the theory. I'm actually in the business of doing it already. I'm creating jobs. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, let us call it the industry of making things happen. If you can make things happen with the little you have, then if you have government position, you can do significantly more. So that's it. And then, of course, my project management skills, I think, teach me not just how to start, but how to finish. Um, so, you know, I, 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 for instance, in my state, there are lots of nice buildings called schools. But you don't have curriculum, or you don't have teachers, and you, therefore you don't have students who are the beneficiaries of this hardware. So I think what we need to do is not just worry about the hardware, building of schools, building of hospitals, but also worry about the software, which will actually convert all that hardware into something substantive. So that's where we come in. Our job is to come and finish. There's some good things that the current government has done, but we need to take it all the way through. And um, that's where I'll come in. I started off scholarships in 2002 um, in my community. Um, we expanded it and now it's across the whole state. Um, so we give scholarships. Um, I also give microfinance to rural women. I um, provide skills development equ uh, equipment as well to people from uh, various communities. Um, sports, um, again orphanages is one of my pet areas. I don't, I don't play with orphanages. I make sure that we do that. So. We're doing lots of things. Um, you know, every day, in some way, we're touching people. But um, it's not, um, in my opinion, um, that part is not politics. That part is simply because, you know, uh, I mean, orphans don't vote. So you're not really trying to touch them because you want them to vote for you. You're just thinking that you have a moral responsibility to reach out to other people. It's not that I don't have my own problems. It's not that I don't have my own pains. But if you continue to look inward, then really, what is community? So, 
that's why we, get, we keep doing what we're doing, and the idea is that we now take that to a political stage, which is not easy because the politicians are selfish people. But um, I believe that if the people, you know, uh, become alive to their responsibility, then ultimately all that will be resolved. People, uh, politicians will start acting on behalf of people when the people realize that they're the ones who have the say. Instead of feeling like victims, they should feel empowered. Yes. Okay. Self-funded in the context of it's it's my own hard-earned revenue. Instead of um, you know, as a political office holder, I take advantage of the political office to do things. I've never held a political office before. The difference between me and the other people who are not politicians is that I aspire to govern. They don't, um, but I'm just like them. I think, you know, um, I, I don't mind being in the background. I like, I actually prefer being in the background. Even politics, is, if not for how things are, I'm, I'm much rather comfortable in the background. So I think with movies, um, you're not likely to see me in the foreground. I'm quite comfortable, again, just pushing people along and making sure that they get on with it. So my name, I don't travel in the, in the Nollywood circles. Uh, many of the people who have acted for my movies I've never met before. Like people will be sorry, I never met Rita Dominic before. And they'd be surprised, hang on, she's the lead actor in your know, this thing. The day I went on set, she wasn't there. So <laughs> we've never met. So my job is just to be in the background and encourage uh, the people to go. And hopefully um, one day uh, all of that will come back and, uh, and, uh, and uh, thank me. But for now, um, we just do the thankless task of doing the work from the background and letting other people take the credit. Oh yeah, that's easy. Um, with social media and the advent of it, I'm all over the place. I'm on Twitter, at Tony Prince, which I hope you will put on the screen. Um, and my website, www.tonyprince.com, is also there. Um, you can reach me um, there. Um, yeah, I'm on BB, I'm on Facebook, and my BB pins and everything are on my Facebook profile. My phone number is on my Facebook profile. So I think I'm the most accessible politician in Nigeria. I don't know anybody that is more accessible than myself. My doors are open. Um, now we're in campaign mode, so it's a campaign office door. But normally on Tuesdays and Thursdays, my house is open for anybody who comes to visit. So I've been very accessible, and I will continue to be that. Only as governor, maybe it will not be so easy to get into government house on a daily basis. But um, one way or the other, we'll find a way to make ourselves even more accessible. But definitely the social media channels are there. You've got the website, you've got Twitter, and um, you've got BB. With those things, you can't go wrong. Well, um, just know that I also am a diaspora. Um, so uh, if you're looking at somebody who had no interest in Nigeria or a passing interest in Nigeria, who is now running for governor of one of the largest states in, in the country, all I can tell you is that the transition really, is not an easy one, but it's a very possible one. If you're interested in coming back to Nigeria, look for me. Um, my contact details are there. What I used to do in the UK is I used to show people how to survive in this system. So when people came into the UK, they would come to me and come to my house and I'll give them that orientation. Now what I find myself doing is giving people orientation on how to survive in Nigeria. So I love the idea of helping people with that transition. And of course, we've said it already publicly. You had the town hall meeting we had with the uh, UK community, the London community. And we said it publicly that we're setting up a diaspora desk for non-resident Nigerians. So that when they want to come into the country, River State is a home where they can find that we'll be able to build capacity and we'll need them. So the message for me is vote for me, talk to people to vote for me, but ultimately when you come back to Nigeria, look for me. We'll be there.